Thank you.
Good day everyone, and I am here to show you around our project entitled Treasures of the Orient. Now, before moving on to the actual showcase itself, you might be thinking to yourself, why do we call ourselves the Cyber Developers Team? Well, the answer to this question is really simple. We call ourselves that name because we develop these projects with the help of 21st century technologies like computers and the internet, which in this case we use to create our project Treasures of the Orient. Now, moving on to Treasures of the Orient itself. It is an architectural exhibit that is styled like a village. It aims to show the varied cultures of the different countries located in Asia by showing the respective country's architecture. This project utilizes the game Minecraft to achieve this goal. Now, on to the showcase itself. Our showcase begins with the country East Timor or Timor-Leste. It is a Southeast Asian nation occupying half the island of Timor. It is ringed by coral reefs teeming with marine life. East Timorese architecture and landscaping is a combination of both Portuguese and indigenous Timorese. Many heritage districts, heritage towns, and heritage structures have been retained in Timor-Leste, unlike its Southeast Asian neighbors whose architectural styles have been dreadfully replaced by modern and shanty structures that have destroyed cultural domains. Our next showcase is our native Nipahat or Bahay Kubo. The Nipahat or Bahay Kubo is a type of stealth house indigenous to the cultures of the Philippines. It's also known as Payag or Kamalig in other languages of the Philippines. It often serves as an icon of Philippine culture. Its architectural principles give way to many of Filipino traditional houses and buildings that rose after the pre-colonial era. It is originally and still typical today for Bahay Kubo to be mostly organic in material and be elevated mainly for vernacular and superstitious reasons and because of floods during wet season and the hot dry land during summer, which can cause a lot of problems for the inhabitants. The next country we are going to showcase is Brunei. Brunei is a country located on the north coast of the island of Borneo in Southeast Asia. Apart from its coastline to the South China Sea, the country is completely surrounded by the insular Malaysian state of Sarawak. Brunei architecture is quite similar to the Philippine and East Timor counterparts as they share the same climate. Brunei architecture shares the same theme as the other countries mentioned earlier, sharing common things like raised floors and wooden construction. One example of Brunei architecture shown is a floating home that is analogous to the homes located in Kampong Ayer a large floating village in Brunei. Our next showcase is the Chinese Pagoda. A pagoda is a tiered tower with multiple eaves common to Nepal, China, Japan, Korea, Vietnam, and other parts of Asia. Most pagodas were built to have a religious function, most often Buddhist but sometimes Taoist and were often located in or near Viharas. The pagoda traces its origins to the stupa of ancient India. Chinese pagodas are a traditional part of Chinese architecture. In addition to religious use, since ancient times, Chinese pagodas have been praised for the spectacular views they offer, and many famous poems in Chinese history attest the joy of scaling these structures. The oldest and tallest pagodas were built of wood, but most that survived were built of brick or stone. Some pagodas were solid and some had no interior at all. Others were hollow and held within an altar with a larger, frequently containing a smaller pagodas. The pagoda's interior has a series of staircases that allow the visitor to ascend to the top of the building and to witness the view from an opening on one side at each story. Most have between 3 and 13 stories almost always an odd number, and the classic gradual tiered eaves. Our next country is Japan. Japanese architecture has been typified by wooden structures elevated slightly off the ground with tiled or thatched roofs. Sliding doors or fusuma were used in place of walls allowing the internal configuration of a space to be customized for different occasions. 
The general structure of these houses are almost always the same. Posts and lintels support a large and gently curved roof, while the walls are paper thin, often movable, and never load bearing. Arches and barrel roofs are completely absent. Gable and eave curves are gentler than in China, and columnar entaces, which is convexity at the center, is limited. Our next showcase comes from the country of Kazakhstan and its traditional yurt. A yurt is a portable round tent covered with skins or felt and used as a dwelling by several distinct nomadic groups in the steeps of Central Asia. The structure consists of an angled assembly or latticework of wood or bamboo for walls, a door frame, ribs, and the wheel, possibly steam bent. The roof structure is often self-supporting, but large yurts may have interior posts supporting the crown. The top of the wall of self-supporting yurts is prevented from spreading by means of a tension band which opposes the force of the roof ribs. Our next showcase is in the country Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabian architecture is adapted to its geography and climate and reflects the uniqueness of Arabian culture. It is located on the Arabian Peninsula in Western Asia, with a Mediterranean and subtropical desert climate. The climate of different regions in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia differs, the architecture and the method of construction. What you see in the video here is an example of Saudi Arabian architecture that is most commonly seen in the desert part of the Kingdom. You can see here that it is made up of sandstone, sand, reflecting the materials commonly found in deserts. And finally, our last showcase comes from the country of Georgia. Georgian architecture is influenced by a number of architectural styles, including several each for castles, towers, fortifications, palaces, and churches. The Upper Svaneti fortifications and the castle town of Shatili in Kebsureti are among the finest examples of medieval Georgian castles. Georgian medieval churches have a distinct character, though related to Armenian and Byzantine architecture, typically combining a conical dome raised high on a drum over a rectangular or cross-shaped lower structure. Often known as the Georgian cross dome style, this style of architecture developed in Georgia during the 9th century. Other architectural styles in Georgia include the housemanized Rustavelli Avenue in Tbilisi and that city's Old Town District. And this completes our showcase of the buildings from our project entitled Treasures of the Orient.